Hello and welcome along this afternoon to uh, Analytics Half an Hour. This afternoon we're going to tackle the question that bugs many businesses who have high value products and services. They want to provide access to a range of PDF brochures, white papers and other information that's of interest to the serious prospect. So in short, when looking at finding out which PDFs are most popular and with whom, we're tackling the question as to how many people download these PDFs, where do they come from, stuff like that. Okay, so let's get going. Well, first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Vernon Riley. Uh, I'm a chartered mechanical engineer and I've spent my career working with systems. And, and what I do is apply engineering insights to uh, make sure that the reporting and measurement systems that go alongside analytics are tailored to fit the business. Uh, now, just a word about the uh, interface at the right-hand side of your browser, if you're listening to this live. Um, there's a sidebar. Uh, one of the tabs is a chat window, uh, and in that you can post messages to me. I can post messages back. I'll do my best to keep up with the messages, but obviously, as you'll understand, I can't necessarily read all the messages whilst I'm concentrating on talking to everyone else. So with that, uh, let's get going. Okay, so we're going to look at tracking downloads. Well, well, first of all, why does this matter? Well, a lot of people are doing content marketing. Others are producing brochures and white papers. And, and time and effort goes into producing those PDFs. And you've got groups of visitors who uh, visit a website and decide to either download, get the PDF, or if you're unlucky, ignore it. Now, if you're thinking about doing similar PDFs in the future, you have to realize it makes sense to know how popular the existing PDFs have been, whether the page on which the PDFs uh, had been had got something that turned people off, uh, whether it encouraged the download or not, whether, whether the title of the PDF had been more or less effective. And quite apart from that, be useful to know which products or services your interest your audience was most interested in so so let's suppose you sell multiple products product a product b product c and on the assumption that you'd like to sell some of them it would be useful to know which of these were the most popular in terms of the visitors who wanted to look at the pdfs the downloads that referred to each of these products and, and that's important because in the general sense, the marketing costs for each of these products and the revenues and the profits are going to be different. So this afternoon, we're going to look at the first part of that, the best practice measurement. We're not going to go today into the return on investment. We can do that on a later uh, session. But we'll look at what the best practice measurement would look like in Google Analytics. And by looking at simulated real data, you'll be able to imagine just how powerful this kind of information could be if it was applied correctly uh, to your business. So, so let's get going with an example. Okay, now what I've done here is I've done, uh, showed you the user flow on a website. Now the website has been uh, constructed, it's fairly simple, and it's, uh, I put analytics on it, and I've enlisted the help of a robot army. I explain. We've got some tools that can send visitors to web pages in a way that will be seen by Google Analytics. So we can control absolutely what each of these robots do, which pages they go to, and what they do on each of those pages. And it will be recorded by Google Analytics in exactly the same way as the real visitors on a real website would be. So in our example, they all start by going to a landing page. 487 of them in this period. And in this particular case, all of them, uh, bar one, made their way to the download page. And you'll see there's a red line uh, to the right of the download green bar. Not all of them, however, 
made their way from arriving on the download page to deciding to download one of the brochures. That would be normal. We do not expect everybody who lands on the download page to download the PDFs. But different numbers downloaded each of the PDFs. And, and remember, each of these PDFs in our example relates to a different product. So you see, we've designed an example for those who've got a range of products that may have different prices that appeal to different people and, and a business that wants to know how to make their marketing spend stretch further. Now, if you sell services, the principle is exactly the same. Now, it's also true to say the route through a website is normally a bit less clear because people wander around, but, but we must be careful before we assume that the wandering is their fault. It can often be that people wander around because they're unsure where the information for that they're seeking is located. And that's a problem with the website. That's, that's down to the business owner, the, the website owner. So here's our simple scenario. They're walking through this and they are, some of them are making their way to download the brochures. Fine. Well, then you get to look at the uh, visitor source and medium. Right. So if you go to the um, uh, acquisition and you look for source and medium, you see on this example that we've got people coming from a variety of places. We've got some that have come from a shop, um, a, a, an external site, but we've got people who've gone there through email. Now, that, as I'll explain later, is not that common. You often don't see email in any great numbers uh, referred to as a specific source of visitors on a website. And that's because people haven't bothered to put the tags in that it would mean that it would be recorded. But we've got others who've come from Google.com. I've got some from LinkedIn, some from face-to-face -face networking, some from the Trade Association website. You'll see... And, and the other thing we've got here that is not always the case is we've got some goals configured in Google Analytics. Now, all too frequently, I find that people haven't done that. But you'll see it, it starts to give us very useful information. It's telling us for a given situation, right, uh, where the people um, came from who downloaded product brochure A. So this is a hard objective measure of the success you're having in your various marketing channels of attracting people who are interested in a brochure that's related to a specific product or a specific service. So you start to be able to have really quite valuable discussions amongst the senior management. Why is email producing the vast majority of goal completions? Why is networking, given the amount of time we invest in it, producing so few? What have we got to show for our advertising on the Trade Association website? Is it just those small number of new users? Or, or are there other side benefits? Why are we not getting more visitors as a result of our activity on LinkedIn? So imagine, if you've got a situation where you've got some a defined set of PDFs and we've taken care to track that they're being downloaded and we've put some goals in and we've made sure that we know where people are coming from, you can look at Google Analytics and it will really give you valuable numbers. This is not touchy-feely stuff. This is hard, objective numbers that tell you what's going on. Okay, now you'll notice I've taken a, a different screen. Helper. You can set up a number of goals, and I've set up different goals. So you can compare, right? Now, the technologist is going to say, so the important thing is that you've got goals set up in, in analytics. And I'm not going to minimize the importance of getting goals set up in analytics. But the smart marketer actually makes a far more valuable observation which is what one needs to do 
is to devise measurable activities that correspond with the objectives of the business. Now, we've taken a relatively simple example. We've assumed that you want to sell one of three products, product A, product B, or product C, and you've got some PDFs that are related to that. Now, your business may or may not be as simple uh, as that. It may have more convoluted uh, sequences, but it, one of the, the skills is in devising activities that can be measured and then you put the, t the measurements in place and then you get your answers as to who is interested in what and the successes of your marketing right so so the smart marketer doesn't accept the numbers they've been given they set out to get the information that will help them right and that if you get nothing else from uh, this video from today's session that would be a really important one now even with this relatively simple example and this relatively small amount of uh, instrumentation and measurement, you get to find out useful stuff. So we can look at the landing page, and here I'm in behavioral pages, and I put a second dimension in. There's a button. Uh, if you look underneath the graph at primary dimension on this screen, you'll see there's page, and, and underneath there's a button, secondary dimension. There's a whole lot of options there. And it's really, really useful for detective work. And we've picked out a single page, landing page, for this period. And we've asked, what was the source of the traffic that came to the landing page? Now, we, we've already seen this in another light, but, but think of that in terms of your website. So for the pages that you've got designated as pages that people should come and land on as a result of your marketing, you get to see which source is the most important right now there's a there's a source that is missing here right that tends to be very common and it's called direct and some people uh, make the mistaken assumption that direct means that they typed the address of your website into the browser well it does include those people but more importantly, it includes everybody that Google doesn't understand how to put into a um, another bucket. So if it doesn't know that it was email, this is the example I gave earlier, it will put them into the direct bucket. It will say that these people came directly to the website. Well, nothing was actually further from the truth. They didn't suddenly wake up that morning and say, you know what, I want to come to your website. They came to your website as a result of seeing a link in an email, right? So again, we start to be able to ask pertinent questions like, well, if that's the level of success that we're getting from email, right? Should we do more of it? How do we get those email addresses? Was it from networking? Was it from some of these other activities, right? So we're asking that question. Now that's at the landing page, right? But we ought to be able to ask the same question further down the sequence, and indeed we can, because we can track, well, once the source and medium have been set up, that persists, that's, that, that's there. So we can ask that about the next page in the sequence, in this case, the download page. So now we're actually getting reasonably close to the truth. If we've got a page that we care about, page where these brochures, the way your content marketing is living, where your PDFs can be consumed, right? Then what caused people to go there? And that might be a totally different balance from some of the other pages on the website, right? So that gets you to the point you're asking even more demanding questions. And we've now arranged and this is where we had to do a little bit of tweaking because unfortunately the the bits of web technology don't normally measure pdfs they measure things that they think of as normal web pages and a, a pdf isn't a normal web page sad to say it would be very convenient if it had been but we can make google analytics measure that and here we've got the downloads for product c and we've split them by the source we're now pretty much at the situation that we wanted to be which is we've got traceability between the people who came 
onto the website and the brochure that they wound up downloading. So we start to have a real impression as to which marketing channel produced most people who were most interested in product A versus product B versus product C. Now, I have to tell you, there are some quite big and sophisticated companies out there that wouldn't be able to give you anything like that clarity in reporting as to the success of their marketing. Right? And if you appreciate what this can do, I can promise you as a somebody who works in the area, I mean, I can do the, the geeky bit, actually setting your website up, doing the bits to make sure you can measure this isn't hard. It's more about the business appreciation that says, well, if I do that, then I get these figures out the end, and then I get to ask some really interesting questions and get answers that will markedly affect and improve the effectiveness of my marketing measurement. So we can identify the origin of the visitors. The visitors were interested in a PDF for a particular product. Right? Now, so what have we got in this example? Well, we've got, we had our robot army. Well, okay, we, we did that for the sake of constructing the example. We've measured where people came from. Some of that happens automatically. Some of that you have to be a bit more deliberate about it and it's help there if you need it. We've got some goals. Again, that, that takes a little bit of a setting up. And we've arranged to measure the PDFs. This is not a big project. This is a very small project in terms of getting that amount of information recorded about what's going on on your website, unless you've got thousands and thousands of PDFs. And if you've got thousands of PDFs, the chances are that you can put the, the code into some standard form that means it's automatically applied across everything. So I hope that's been useful. Uh, I'd like to uh, get your impressions as to what has been clear, what's been unclear, what you'd like to see more of, what didn't make sense. So um, if you're listening to this live, I'm going to send you uh, the opportunity to go to a survey and tell us what you thought of this uh, analytics half hour. Um, if there are issues that arise in terms of your website, I'll also send you a link so you can book um, an appointment and we can have a, a brief chat about what you'd like to be able to do in your situation. Um, but other than that, I'm going to say thank you very much for coming along. Uh, I hope that's been useful. Uh, we'll look at the next part uh, of best practice measurement in a couple of weeks. So look out for the emails and I'll look forward to talking to you then. If you want to catch up with me, I've got a LinkedIn profile. Uh, that's there on the screen. Uh, there's my email, vernon.riley at kksmarts.com, and there's the web address. So with that, uh, we're through with our analytics half hour for today, and I'll look forward to talking to you next time. This is Vernon Riley saying bye for now.